To say that I'm excited about making this video is a little bit of an understatement because today we're going to be pitting what's widely considered as the industry standard for checking PAR values in our reef tank under our LED lighting, the Apogee MQ510 PAR meter against the Dano Plus from Amazon. And we're going to check this out in a relatively scientific manner-ish and find out if this guy can hold its own in the ring with the king. Let's get started. I'm gonna make a statement later in this video regarding the Dano Plus PAR meters, and it is of critical importance that you catch that statement. It wouldn't make sense for me to tell it to you right now, but be sure that you don't miss that because it could cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars in corals if you do. So before we head into the actual comparison between these PAR meters, we need to know what PAR is and why it's even important to us and our tanks at all. So PAR is an acronym for photosynthetically active radiation, which is a measurement of the light wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers of light that things like corals and plants and algaes use for photosynthesis. That's the scientific definition. So what does that mean in layman's terms? Well, you guys know me and you know that I love a good analogy, but to understand PAR, we need to understand a little bit about light itself. So whenever you turn a light on over your aquarium or in your room, or even when the sun is in the sky outside, those light sources are emitting photons. Now, photons are an actual tangible thing, much like this cat toy that I have in my hand here. The light is going to be on, the photons are going to travel through space and time and get to a destination, be it some other thing like a coral or a plant or the windshield of the car in front of you, and it's either going to absorb into that thing and be used in some way, or it's going to reflect or refract off of that thing and go directly into your eyeballs. Much like this cat toy, if I throw it at the wall, you could hear that thing smack into that wall and light photons do exactly the same thing. Now that mindset is going to allow us to compare the PAR coming out of the lights in your aquarium to a thunderstorm and rain falling on a garden of plants. Each individual photon of light can be thought of a raindrop that's coming out of that cloud and falling onto a garden. Just like the plants in your garden need the proper amount of rain to grow properly, so do the corals in your tank, and more specifically, the symbiotic zooxanthella that live within the tissues of the corals need the proper amount of light to photosynthesize and provide those corals with the energy that they need to grow. Generally speaking, the more rain that falls on your garden and the more par that falls on your corals is going to be more fuel for them for energy production and growth. But with almost everything in this hobby and uh, probably in life for that matter, too much or too little of a good thing can be a bad thing. If there's too little rain falling on your garden, your plants will wilt. And just like that, if there's too little par hitting your corals, they can turn brown and shrink and eventually even just die. And on the flip side of that, if there's too much rain falling on your garden, your plants are going to just get absolutely drowned in the water. And if there's too much par hitting your corals, they can bleach where the symbiotic zooxanthella actually check out and hit stage left and leave the building. Neither situation, too much or too little par, is good for our corals. We need to make sure that the corals that we are putting in our tanks go into an area into the tank where the par is going to be sufficient for them to sustain life. By the way, YouTube has included this really neat feature. I want you to tell me if it's working on my videos. Look down at the like button. And when I said that word, did it highlight the like button? If it did, hit the button and let me know. Now that we kind of have an understanding of what PAR is and why it's important, we need to know that all corals are not the same. Generally speaking, your softies and low light LPS corals are gonna need anywhere from 50 to about 150 PAR, and your middle of the road LPS and some SPS are gonna need from about 150 to 250-ish or so, and some of your higher light requirement SPS acros and clams could need even more than 250 up to 400 or 500 
depending on what it is. And this is important because it's going to tell you where in the tank you're going to need to place those corals to make sure that they're going to get what they need to know. So where do you even find this information? It's not like we have a repository of coral information for lighting, par, and flow levels. Oh, wait. Yeah, we do. So I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They did not ask me to say this. This is just something that I use all the time when I'm in the store and I'm like, hey, I want to check out the requirements of this thing because I don't remember what they are. I go to TitleGardens.com. I think the way they have their website laid out is very nice for quick identification of what specific coral needs as far as lighting, flow, and feeding requirements go. It's just been a really good resource to me and I thought I would let you know about it. And now we get to that part that most of you are probably here for, and that is the direct comparison of the Dano Plus PAR meter against the Apogee MQ510 King of the Ring. So I wanted to make sure that the meters were getting as close to the same measurement as I could. So I used this incredibly extensive technique for connecting these two meters together in a way that would allow the meter to have the same height and also the same angle towards the light sources, at least as close as I could to getting them into the exact same scenario. And then, as you can see behind me, I put post-it notes all over the tank. I've got four different colors and that corresponds to the four different intensities that I was going to run and test the tank at 175, 50, and 25% with my lights with all four channels of these Pop Bloom RL90s set at 100%. And then I decided for the heck of it to test my frag tank light, the RL60, and my wine glass tank as well, which has a Delua Illumagic pixel in the reefer coloration on it. I'm going to be doing product video reviews on both the RL60 and the Delua coming up in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you get the notifications when those review videos drop. Next up, I started taking the measurements and just writing on the post-its what it said on the screen of the de devices. But you need to take note that these numbers are not the same from both devices. This is very important. Now, I ran 60 different tests on my main display and I checked the other tanks too, but I didn't take those measurements into the analytical portion of this just the 60 tests from the main tank. And what I came up with was a correction factor on the Dano Plus of 1.8, which means that you have to take the, num the number from the Dano Plus device, multiply that by 1.8 to get your actual real PAR measurement. And this is that critical statement that I was talking about earlier. The Dano Plus reads lower than the Apogee 510. Now we know that the Apogee is measure is a good tool for measuring par. It's been tested through time and trials and thousands and thousands of tanks, and we know it's good. So to compare the Dano Plus to it directly needs this correction factor because we know the Dano Plus is not reading the numbers in exactly the same way. But is it accurate enough for us to apply the corrective factor and still be able to use it. Let's find out. I did a little bit of digging online and I found other people who have done similar tests to the one that I have done. And we all came up with a little bit of a different corrective factor. This one from Telegram said that his correction factor was 1.02. And I found another one that was 1.4, another one that was 1.7, and my own came out to 1.8. I'm chalking this up to human error. I think that the way we test these tanks introduces variables that are almost uncontrollable. When I was testing my tank, I had all of the flow pumps turned off and looking at the meters, even just holding the wand was creating enough surface rippling in the tank that it would make the meters jump around a little bit. And so while I was doing the, the test, I had to take a mental average of the numbers that I was seeing on both screens <laughs> and try to come up with an average number that I could write down on my post-its. I completely understand and recognize that this process 
introduced some percent error into the equation. Now, the reason that I think that this is chalked up to human error is because of a single post that I found on reef to reefcom while I was doing my research on this parameter. This person is a literal expert in the field, and this is what they had to say. I work in metrology at an aerospace lab and was able to get this meter on a rail and get it calibrated. It was surprisingly within tolerance. I have the results, but it was basically within 0.2% of reading. Now, the field of metrology is literally the study of instruments and how they work and what they do in their calibrations and all that. So I have no reason to dispute what this person is saying. And if they are saying that on their precision equipment, the sensor was within 0.2% of the tolerance readings that they state that it can do, that pretty much leaves the rest up to human error. Now on my tank with the flow off, like I mentioned earlier, I still had about a 20 to 30 par difference in the numbers with the flow actually turned on in the tank and the surface uh, agitation in the tank, tank. <laughs> <laughs> with the flow turned on in the tank and the surface agitation actually more choppy, that par range that I was seeing in those meters in my hand was upwards of 50 to 70 par difference between the high and low numbers. So depending on all these factors, how much surface agitation you have, how much clarity is in your water actually matters. The salinity of your water, believe it or not, actually matters because the elemental composition of the water can take some of that light and send it off in different directions and refract it in different ways. Now, I said all of that so that you guys would have all of the information and know the truth about the testing that I did and all of that. I'm being completely transparent. And with all that said, does it really even matter? In my testing, I found that the Dano Plus had about a 14% deviation in range of what where it was measuring to be accurate to the apogee. But how much of 14% deviation is really important? Let's just take a hypothetical coral, for example, that needs 125 to 300 par. That's the range that it does best in. If we take 14% of the difference between 125 and 300, it comes out to 24.5 par. The meter that I was using to read the par was fluctuating by 20 to 30 par. So I was already getting that 14% variance right there in the fluctuations on the par meter. So as long as we don't place our corals in our tanks, either on the min or on the max of what the meter is reading, you're going to be able to get a good enough reading from it to know where to stick stuff. And that is really all we're using it for. So I talked for the last couple of minutes about a whole bunch of crap that most of you probably don't even care about and you ultimately wanted me to culminate with this. Is the Dano Plus Par Meter good enough for us as reef keepers to use to be able to choose where in our tanks to put our corals and how to set our lights? You're damn right it is, especially for the money. I would rather spend 150 bucks on the Dano Plus and save that other 350 bucks for some corals because the Apogee is 550 to 600 dollars. Now, if you're keeping high-end corals that came with a heavy price tag and 17 names behind them, maybe you should go with the Apogee just to be sure you have that little bit of additional accuracy from that device. But for me and for my tank, the Dano Plus gets the thumbs up. Oh, and by the way, there are affiliate links for both PAR meters down in the description if you want to get either one of these PAR meters for yourself using those links. Helps me out a little bit. I do all this for free. So yeah, help me, help you, help you help me. We help me and you, or just you help me, I don't know. <laughs>